Probably say my motivation stemmed from not knowing my father because I wanted to get to a point where I could shun him. I never told you this. I was pissed and I was mad at you. Look, nobody cares that you played for 12 years or that you represented Canada. I won a championship with Montenegro, like, we can't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Decided to go get your MBA. You show up to class in flip flops. And they were like, okay, let's jump on a Google Hangout call tonight. My mind's like, what the heck is Google Hangout? The only thing I used was our, our WhatsApp. The only way to make it is if you have that linear focus. You have to give this your all. Yeah, but I mean, like I said, the time is there. When you initially stopped, what did your resume look like? My resume? Yeah. <laughs> it's nothing. It's just... <laughs> what would be the first skill you would tell someone else to work on while they're playing? The biggest thing is... Today we are joined by someone very special, a former teammate of mine. He is a Eastern Commerce Institute alumni. He played there in 2002. He then went on to Fordham University, has played in various countries all overseas, had an 11-year professional career, and played in countries such as Spain, Germany, Russia, Croatia, France, Montenegro, and even Canada. He has been a member of the senior men's national team since 2004, playing in 75 international games with the team. He has competed in the FIBA America, captain of the team in Turkey and as well as Brazil. In 2018, Jermaine founded a 50 for Free, a youth initiative, a not-for-profit organization to teach financial literacy and imperative life skills through sport. In this episode, I hope you find how important it is to use your time, whether you're an athlete or not in any sort of discipline. When you have downtime, use that time and then also exploring other passions. We do not live in a time now where one thing is mainly going to sustain you. It's very, very important for us to find other things that you know we are good at and that we like doing and without further ado let's get into it jermaine anderson aka rock you know what i've you know i used to call you earthstone that was my name i used to call you earthstone all right where, where did the name rock come from it was actually given to you by a childhood friend junior reed okay gave me the nickname rock uh, oh, and Junior Reed to you. So Junior Reed to me is a childhood friend. Um, probably one of the best basketball players to come out of Toronto. Really? Um, he didn't end up getting Division One scholarship or anything along those lines, but at that time he was the best player in the city. Okay. Um, and I challenged him uh, years ago, and we ended up playing one on one at Humber College. <laughs> and uh, even though he beat me, it was a tough game, and he was like, "I have the utmost respect for you. Yeah. I got to give you a nickname. You don't have a nickname." And uh, me like a couple months later, he's like, yo, I got a nickname for you. He called me, called my grandmother. He's like, hey, is Jermaine there? I got a nickname. Your name's J-Rock. And I went from J-Rock to Rock to Rocco. So everybody has their own version of Rock. Yeah. Because yeah. I was going to say, when I met, when I heard of you, I only heard Rock. I never heard Jermaine Anderson. I heard Rock. Yeah. A lot of people don't even know my name is Jermaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, I didn't really know that either. When I was yeah. a kid growing up, um, you know, hearing your name all i heard was rock rock and then seeing you play and but who who introduced you to basketball uh i would say my cousins okay. uh chris and garnett and when um when my grandmother took me in um growing up at kingdom wilson it was like a park right across from my building and i would just go and watch them watch them play um pretty much every day i would try to jump in but at the time i was you know too little yeah um and then it got to a point where i was taking care of business nah. you know what i mean so i became like the young guy um playing you know on the street ball scene amesbury park um what age down uh grade five okay. so probably like 10 10 11 years old okay um and then uh, playing for trinity okay. um won a championship given show uh, you know beat up on the net and you know, <laughs> schools like that so you know this 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 the city is hoping and and just running around and making a name for myself i'll say when did you realize that you were good uh, I'd probably say grade six. Okay. I got an opportunity to go to uh, the Raptors basketball camp. Okay. Toronto Raptors basketball camp. So this was in what, 95, 96. Yeah. Well, the team started in Yeah, so yeah, yeah. This was their first camp. First year. Yeah, at, uh, at York University. And I got an opportunity to meet Isaiah Thomas. Really? Uh, what was that like? Honestly, it was, it was a blessing. Yeah. You know, meeting one of the best point guards to ever play the game. And um, actually, he actually get, gave me a ride home uh, from oh, York one day. What did he tell you? Um, I said I don't remember the conversation, but he was just like, you know, I, I work hard, and mm, yeah. you know, what I mean, my approach to the game. But it was just, just just really cool, you know, what I mean, just having that first-hand experience with with an NBA Hall of Famer. Yeah, you know. Um, what was your motivation for trying to 
quote unquote make it you know what like what kept you involved in basketball and not doing other things especially growing up here in the inner city um to be honest i'd probably say my motivation um stemmed from not knowing my father so I, I would say like i wanted to get to a point where he knew who i was and because of basketball because of basketball wow. so then like it was in many ways, it was, I would say it was somewhat negative because I wanted to get to a point where he knew where I was, where I could shun him. Wow. Right, the way that he, you know what I mean? The way that he shunned me. Um, so I'd say that was uh, my initial motivation. Um, but then just just wanted to compete and, and get better. And, you know, I guess for any young player, it's made them be it. Yeah. You know, so. We, um, you said your grandmother took you in, so I'm assuming your parents were, were not around and you, you were... Yeah, well, there. yeah, well, my mom, my mom was around, um, but she got into a little bit of trouble, um, so she was incarcerated for a period of time. Okay, and then, uh, and then my dad was never there. Right, so he was never there. So my mom got arrested. My grandparents took me in. Yeah, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I owe everything to them because it wasn't for them about being the like foster system, right? So yeah, yeah. Um, they took me in, but then I was around my cousins every day because they lived upstairs in the building that I was in. Right. And basketball so, gave you the foundation, and yeah, yeah, it gave gave me an opportunity to to travel and and you're welcome. You know, make it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I travel. You know I mean? Yeah, I, you know, I had some fun, so yeah. it was cool. Uh, well, you were obviously after the sixth grade, you were you know well accomplished. You went to Eastern Commerce. You then got a scholarship to go to best, Florida best school ever. I don't care. Okay, I'm not listen. I you know what? I was gonna leave that out. All right. I was gonna leave that part out. But, you know what I mean? It's, it's a new age. It's, it's a prep age. So, you know what I mean? You gotta make sure people know Eastern Commerce. This is your show. You go ahead and you shout yourself. I was gonna say you got a D1 scholarship when it was hard. When it was yeah. really hard. Yeah. How many people did that back in those days? Not to age you at all, but I'm just giving you your, <laughs> your props. I appreciate that. You know, I appreciate that. Every kid left, right, and center is going D1 nowadays. You did it when it was when it was really tough. So um, you got to go to Fordham University yeah. or college in New York, and you got to <laughs> you got, you got to go to Wall Street. Talk yeah. about that experience for me. What was it like to go to Fordham and talk about what you, you know, you know your experience um, working on Wall Street? Um, I mean, honestly, Ford, Fordham was great. Um, Bob Hill, Bob Hill recruited me, former NBA coach. And uh, even though he played for for one year, it's just being able to, um, I mean, just just become a man, right? Like mm-hmm. you know, Bob Hill pretty much, you know, we're on our own. We have to fend for ourselves. Oh, wow. um, what do you mean by that? Well, we didn't have like an, a st- like study hall. And oh, okay. Cause you're from the NBA, right? It's just like yeah, you got to yeah. figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So I almost I almost flunked out my freshman year. Um, and then Coach Dale Whitberg came in. He was extremely strict. I was able to turn things around. Um, but then when Coach Whitberg came in, he he encouraged us to you know take advantage of our internship opportunities uh, and stuff like that. So uh, I got a chance to to work for the at, at the New York Stock Exchange, um, which is pretty cool. Like all I did was just like run around and just talk to people, um, you know, go out for lunch and just hang out. But it was cool. Like, you know, I was dressed up and then I um, also worked for Smith Barney. Okay. Um, Why was that important for you to do? Uh, I also had a passion for finance. Okay. Right. So, you know, being on Wall Street, the mecca of, um, I guess, like, it's like the financial epicenter of, of oh, the world. Big time. Um, I would say. But just, just, just being around and, and learning and, and being able to, to make some money, put some money in my pocket, mm-hmm. you know, it was, a, it was a really cool experience. And you... Since I've known you, you've always been someone who's been very routine and very disciplined. How have you taken all that experience and now applied it to what you're, you know, what I mean, to what you're currently doing? Doing now, um, to be honest, I don't really see it as a routine. For me, it's just like a way of life. No, it's a routine. <laughs> no, that's, that's clear. <laughs> it's a routine. To, to you, it may not be, but to the rest of us, it's a routine. It's a, it's a routine. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, it, it it helps me, right? Like it, the the routine gives me a, a certain level of confidence. Mm-hmm. So I know if, if if I'm prepared in whatever it is that I'm doing, then, you know, when I walk into a room or, you know, like when I'm getting ready to play a game, like I feel like I'm I'm ready to perform. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't really see it as a routine. I just see it as like, like my routine. Like I just came from the market, right? It's yeah. my Saturday, Saturday morning routine. Like, um, yeah, this, that, the things that I enjoy, I just do it on a regular basis. That's right. how I look at it. When you were, when you were, when you were in college, you, you know, you know, you're a four-year starter, you're a standout there. 
how were how was how was routine and how was working in the stock market helping you because it kind of planted a seed for what you're doing now so you know how yeah. how do you think all of all of those experiences helped you now um i'll say it gave me a base and a, and a foundation i think at the time when i was in when i was in college i was forced yeah. right like it, it wasn't like a way of life for me and going d1 was everything that's what that was, oh yeah that no, was that way mean, out yeah that was a way out that was a goal right like get a free education um you know for me to put myself in a position to to get to the nba right like at the time i didn't know anything about like european leagues mm -hmm. in europe it was just like all right i'm watching nba on nbc like <laughs> going right to yeah i'm going to the league yeah right like that was the goal um, and then obviously over time I learned about like, oh, there's a, there's pro leagues in like Germany and France and Spain. And, um, and then obviously representing Canada, um, I gained like a level of exposure, right. To that. So, um, just, it, I'll just say it shaped my foundation and base and, um, and yeah, just being on wall street was, was, was pretty cool. Cause it was just, you know, as, as a young black kid from Toronto, did you feel out of place? Uh, yeah, I did. I did, but it, I, not as much because uh, I, I was there with one of my teammates. Okay. Um, but then after talking to to the to the guys there that were on the floor, I mean, they were they were savages. <laughs> Is that all right? <laughs> um, but no, they they were really cool, and and the people that I was working with, like they they made me feel comfortable. All right. So, yeah, it was it was fun. It was fun. Looking looking back now, um, you know, you're done playing now, and and. What, what do you think when you look back at even even from Eastern to Fordham to pro when you stopped playing what do you think you you lost and what do you think you gained when I stopped playing yeah um and when you started to move into other things yeah it's AKA tough. a transition yeah I think like the identity crisis so when I stopped playing I wanted to I didn't want to be known as as a basketball player why um, I just felt like I wouldn't get the same respect, right? Like if, if, you know, I played for a long time, right? So I didn't necessarily have, um, any corporate experience or a business background. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, okay, if I want to enter this world, uh, this world of finance or whatever it is, I got to so somewhat like disassociate myself with the game. And then like, you know, we talked about this, like when I met with different people, all they wanted to talk about was like my journey mm -hmm. and like what was like what were the parties like in Serbia or Croatia et cetera right? and I'm just like because it's cool to them yeah for them so they never like, got to do that and they never got to do it yeah. right so everything that I was like trying to run away from people were like gravitating towards mm -hmm. right but it took a while for me to to understand that mm -hmm. and then when I did I was just like oh like I should I should embrace it Mm. Right, because if, if you want to talk about like what life is like in Moscow and Serbia, anyway, I'm, I might as well, you know, what I mean, lead off with that. Yeah, right. So I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, and like so, like I, you know, I, I want to, you know, give give a shout out to Ashanti Burke because he connected me with so many people on right. A Street. And um, who was he to you? Oh, a longtime friend. Okay, longtime friend. We were actually at Forum together. Uh, oh, okay. first year. Did he hoop? He hooped as well too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From from Mexico. Um, he was like a standout at Naki and I'm okay. getting a scholarship as well too. But, um, he was on the street for a while, you know, and I told him that, Hey, I want to, you know, transition into this world and he connected me to a bunch of people. But all they wanted to talk about was <laughs> life overseas. Right. And like what, you know, women were like and stuff like that. So I'm just like, yeah, I'm just embrace it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you give him a lot to talk about? Yeah, no, I gave him a lot. So you gave him a lot. Yeah, Do you think that that helped you build trust and build a rapport with those people? Yeah. Cause I... The only thing they care about is the your the relationship. I know, right? Yeah. Like, so for me, it's just like, oh, I gotta be like this person, this is, you know, dress up. But they, they didn't really care about that. It was just like, oh, like, are you? They want to like you. you. Yeah, are you personable? Yeah. Like, yeah. As, from what I learned, that's 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 all they cared about. And so far, and I'm fascinated with with your story because you you've gone, you've technically transitioned so many different times. You've gone from playing to, you know, doing. Um, uh, for Canada basketball, you were are you doing the player development, and then you became yeah. GM, and you've done so many different things. And but then on, then you stopped, and then you decided to go back to the classroom. Yeah, you decided to go get your MBA. Why? Why did you do that? And what? Like, how do you? How did you adapt to that type of change? Uh, I mean, honestly, it was it was 
Coach Roy Rana. <laughs> like, okay. He was the one that actually um, reached out to me. He was just like, hey, like, you should do this. Because at the time, um, I guess TMU now, yeah, they came out with a, a sports business program, like mm-hmm. a sports business MBA. He was like, hey, like, you should do this. Like, some, um, I think you would benefit from it. And he was like, look, if you want to get in on the front, front office side at the highest level, right, like, what are you going to do to separate yourself? Mm. You know, and, and he was like brutally honest. He was like, look, nobody cares that you played for, you know, 12 years or that you represented Canada. Why do you think that is? Um, why don't, why do I think he said that? No, why do you think nobody cares? And like, why is that important for people to understand? Because you could have the longest career and you're right. No one gives a shit. Yeah, nobody cares. I mean, I just think for one over time, right, mm-hmm. people forget like what you've done. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you're entering a new space. Right, so you're entering a space where people, maybe people have developed relationships with, you know, with senior management, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, no, no, he's, and he's right. Like, yeah. but he knows everything. <laughs> you're absolutely right. You kind of have to start over, right? Yeah. You have to, you have to form partnerships, build new relationships with people. Um, like the fact that I was an athlete, like, yeah, maybe I was able to get in the door. Yeah. Um, because of it and maybe people heard about my story and wanted to learn a bit more but you just like you need to separate yourself so okay so so as an athlete you got in the door yeah you're one of two black students yeah the entire class everyone else had five to ten years experience you had yeah. none you show up to class in flip-flops you didn't have any proper <laughs> proper clothing yeah, didn't have the proper... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't have you you you're you're still a hooper going to class in the hoodies and whatnot so didn't all that make you feel like insecure about you know being there? No, because I was comfortable. Oh. <laughs> right, like, I was okay. comfortable. Like, uh, I mean, four years of of, of university, like yeah. that was my attire. Okay, right. Yeah. Like, yeah. You go from practice, you throw on your sweats, and you go to class. You practice twice a day. Yeah. Practice twice a day. So um, I pretty much just went in there with the same mindset. And the wise person said, like, yo, you you have to like switch up. Yeah, and, to- like yeah, <laughs> you're you're around corporate people, business. So what you do? Yeah, you have, you know, your professors are bringing in different guest speakers. Uh, you got to present yourself a certain way, and yeah, I ended up going on little shopping, shopping spree. Yeah, yeah, help you, help you get a little more situated. Yeah, you know, buy some clothes. So tell, tell me about, <laughs> tell me about the the Google Hangout story. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> so well, um, what happened with your first assignment? Yeah, first assignment, the uh, professor split us up into groups. Um, I think I was in a group of five. And we were, we were studying the the marijuana industry at the time. Yeah. They were talking about yeah. um, legalizing it, and uh, so I was in my group. Uh, we met, and they were like, "Okay, like we need to figure out what we're gonna do. Um, like, let's jump on a Google Hangout call tonight." Mm-hmm. I was like, "All right, it's like perfect." My mind said, like, "Yo, what the heck is Google Hangout?" All right, I didn't even have a Google. I didn't even have a Gmail account. Nothing. So I'm like, "All right, cool." So I'm like, I "Rush home." Um, so I set up a Google account um, uh, through through TMU, and uh, I ended up missing the meeting because <laughs> I just didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. So the next day they're like, "Yeah, where were you?" I was like, "Yeah, internet, computer, <laughs> or whatever." But like as as a pro athlete, right? Like the only thing I used was our, our WhatsApp chat group, and uh-huh. scouting was done by paper. Scouting, yeah, everything was you know handed and to write paper, it down, or write it down. Yeah. Um, obviously when I was in, in, in university, you know, we printed our paperwork, handed it in. Um, so it was just like, for me, that was like, oh, wow. Like this, this is like a different world. Yeah. yeah. It's a new age. Yeah. Um, even handing in assignments, everything was, was done online. So, um, and that's such a simple thing. And that's simple. why I asked, but it's like so many people like, well, I had a Google account, so I'm not as bad as yeah. you, but other people, they may not have had those. Like that's something so simple, but it's such a, if you come from a different world, and you go to this, like, that's all new to you. It's new, yeah, because, uh, I mean, at the time, I had a Hotmail account and a .edu. Okay. Right? It was like, <laughs> yeah. Fordham, whatever, Jermaine, at Fordham.edu. Yeah. All right? So, um, even my contracts, everything was sent to, like, my Hotmail account. Yeah. <laughs> or, like, yeah. WhatsApp. Yeah, no, I know, yeah. Right? So, sure. Yeah, it's, I laugh about it now, but at the time, I was just like, I got to figure this out. Mm-hmm. I got to figure this out. That's a new challenge. New challenge. Right. All right, so it was, it was more so the the technical side. Um, so now you're in it. Now you're doing the MBA. You know, you finally got a Google account. 
You yeah. can you can go on now. Bro. Go, you're smooth now. I'm sailing. Did you feel like when you're in it, like oh, I'm 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 here? Like, did you feel like like how long did it take you to feel like I belong here? Um, it wasn't until we finished that assignment. Well, it wasn't until we we're actually midway through the, that assignment. And um, what happened? We had to. I think we had to. We had to figure out how the. To figure out how other uh, other countries were so, somewhat navigating, um, so sort of like the, the marijuana industry, and I remember um, one of my classmates, she was like, "Oh, okay, like in Germany they do this, in France they do this." Da da da. I remember saying to myself, "Like, nah, it's <laughs> that, they like that. That, 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 that incorrect." <laughs> um, and then I was like, "You know what? Like, let me take the international side of things because you." And I lived like that. I mean, I lived in Germany. I lived in France. Um, I lived in parts of Eastern Europe. Um, so I, I, I understood the political landscape in those countries. Mm -hmm. um, and then we ended up winning um, that group assignment mm -hmm. um, and being able to present uh, to the. Uh, I can't. I can't. I can't remember if it was Canopy. I can't remember which company it was, but we we, we got an opportunity to to present. But it was due to the fact that we nailed the international piece. And then I was like, I'm the guy. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm him in this classroom right now. <laughs> but it wasn't until that point that I was like, oh, okay, like, what am I doing here? And that is invaluable experience that you have and that you possess. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, just li li um, visiting and, and living in, in, in different parts of the world. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was tough. Like, you know, you go from playing in front of thousands of people traveling, um, you know, sitting in a classroom for three hours a day. It was just, it was, it was tough. It was tough, but I'm, I'm glad that I did it. Yeah. I'm glad that I did it. And do you, do you believe that because of your discipline within your routine and basketball that helped you sit through the, the classroom? Because things I don't want to do, I can do them now just solely because I've been at practice when, when I didn't want to practice and you just have to do it anyway. Uh, yeah, to an extent. I think, I think part of the reason why I stayed is people like caught wind that I was, that I was doing it. Yeah. I was like, oh no, people know. So I was like, yeah, no turning back. Yeah, no turning back. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to embarrass myself. I've, I was, I've always been known um, as somebody like whatever I start, like I want to finish. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was like, oh, people know I got to figure it out. But then once I, I got the, once I, got over that hurdle, it was, it was smooth sailing. And you told me that you have a passion for helping people to build wealth and mm -hmm. enjoy finance. What transferable skills do you think you've learned throughout playing that helped you now, helped you get through the NBA, helped you now in the workplace, in the fields that you're in? Um, I think for one, like being able to manage conflict. Big one. Right? Like, um, you know, obviously, you're over the course of a season, right, you have your ups and downs, you know, issues with teammates, coaches. Um, but no matter what, you're still a team, you're still a family. You have to, you have to figure it out if you want to be successful. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing. And, you know, just being able to, to connect with people, uh, to relate, um, to have an understanding of maybe what somebody's going through because I, you know, they're somewhere or um, I have an understanding of, of different cultures. But at the end of the day, regardless of what industry or business you're in, it's all about people mm -hmm. and how you're able to relate, right? And that's the beauty of basketball. Um, you're you're connected to to so many different people across the globe. Yeah, and you know that is a beautiful thing. I mean, that's that's why you're sitting here. You know, we're we were teammates <laughs> once upon a time. Yeah, so, wow, wow, which is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> wow, teammate, <laughs> which is crazy. And you got me when I was fresh out of school, twenty three. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I don't even yeah. Die. We're not, we're not gonna get into all that. I can see. I you. sure brought my cue card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure brought mine. Uh, no, I, what, one thing I, I definitely, like I said, I admire about you, and what I learned about you is that is like your attention to the details and the small things. And um, I remember some of the film sessions in Germany. Um, you and Buck, we would be going through a film session and I'd be like, all right, I want to get out of here. I want to go to practice. And you would be asking a million questions. Yo, what are we doing on the screen? How, yo, how? I was asking him for you. Yeah. I, I, knew, I knew the answer. I wanted, wanted to make sure you were good. <laughs> all this, I'm like, oh my God, here we go again with more questions, more questions. So it's funny because you're so far when I started doing this, you're the only person that I was like, I'm going to call him 
tell them to come out to eat. Yeah. I can sit down and explain why I think this is important, why I think. Because you know who's going to come. Because I knew you wouldn't come because of, the, because of the details. Yeah, yeah. So we go to Cheesecake Factory. And, of course, I order a quesadilla. And our time in, in Germany, I, I started to think back to when we would be eating. And we would go out to eat. And I would I would be there. And you, you would start asking questions about the food. So we go to Cheesecake Factory. I order a quesadilla, simple Caesar salad. Yeah. I'm trying to be healthy because I'm around you. I probably wouldn't get that. <laughs> you go now order... And I had to write it down because it was so, it, to enough. me, it's like, I'm, th I'm right back in Germany now. And I'm like, your order, <laughs> everything was scrutinized. Literally, the, the Brussels sprouts, the crispy bacon, no bacon on the <laughs> maple butter. Is, is, there, is there garlic mayo and said, what, what's the mayo made from? <laughs> There's no dairy in the mayo, right? Okay, cool. Where's the chicken raised? <laughs> yeah, I, think, I, think, I know, but, babe, but you, you have asked that before. That's what I'm that, saying. Yeah. Everything to diet. And but honestly, that's that's what made you a pro, is all those little. That's that's how you get eleven years, yeah. you know, out of your body. And that, I've just I'm thinking back to that. I'm like, damn, like that's that's that. You're still you're still that detailed, you know, and that and and so you're eating all those snitchos in Jeremy, <laughs> man. So you got hurt. <laughs> facts, it's facts. It's so true. But um, what what would you say? How important is it for you? And how and what would you tell other athletes to explore other interests? Um, while they're playing no i mean that that that's it right like the one thing the beauty about being overseas is like you have so much like so much free time right like i the one thing i would say is and i wish i i wish i would have taken advantage of this from the, the time is just like identifying your passions while you're there even maybe even before but then making sure that you have everything in place while you're still playing right you think it's hard to identify your passion though while you're playing like you uh -huh. go back from practice 10 and 6 like bro we're tired no, yeah. no, 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 not really. Not really. Because, I mean, everybody is passionate about something. Something else. Something else yeah. outside of, like, their craft, right? But it's figuring out, okay, like, how, and, and whether it's, like, charitable or a way to make extra uh, money, it's identifying that and saying, okay, like, how can I build on this, mm -hmm. right? Like, how can I make a business out, out of whatever, whatever that is, um, figuring out a way to, like, build it while you're still active. Because it's easier to get things done, and your name has a bit more your relevant. Name, yes, yes. So do do you do you think, regardless of the level you play? Because I know guys in the NBA they still struggle with that. Yeah. Whether whether it's the NBA level, European level, um, why do you think that is that people struggle to identify a second passion? Do you think they're giving it enough time? Do you think they know? Do you think they've been taught? Yeah, for one, they probably haven't been taught, but everybody is just so they're stuck on the the craft, mm -hmm. right? And you know, regardless of how long you play, like uh, there is, there's an end date to it by force or by choice, by force or by choice. The two, right. One of the two. Right. But we just, we just get caught up. Right. And you get caught up and also to the lifestyle, but that's the only way to make it though. It's the only way to make it is if you have that linear focus and that, and like you're taught that at a young age, you have to give this your all. And if you don't, you probably won't make it. Yeah. But I mean, like I said, the time is there. Like e even like you think about trap, even traveling, Oh, right. You're you're on a plane for you know three hours, four hours, whatever it is, bus. or a bus, oh or you're in a bus God. overseas. You're on a bus. Oh my God, I have an hours. Like that's the time to like read, do something. Yeah. Right. Like instead of like watching Martin, like I was like watching this time, watching Martin, like you know, for like six hours. You know how many fish shows I read? <laughs> Game of Thrones, this thing. Lord of the Rings. I watched the whole thing on twenty four trips. Yeah. Oh yeah, you put me on twenty four. Yeah, that was the Jack Bauer. Jack Bauer, right? <laughs> I was like, man, that was a good one. I could have gotten like another certificate or passed yeah. a course instead of like watching Jack Bauer uh, run around, right? So it's just, I, for one, yeah, you're right. Like we're not taught to like identify what it is we're passionate about, right? Like it's just like, okay, like this is what you're good at. Become the best at whatever that is. And after that, like you have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, you touched on earlier that you, you, well, I touched on it. You were in player development. That's basically coaching. But, you know, it's like individualized no, coaching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But why, why didn't you did, like, do what everyone else did, which is all your peers and everybody, everyone just gets into coaching or training. Like that's, and you had offers to be a coach at, yeah. at, and get paid well and dabble in that. Why, why was it so important for you not to do that? I, was just, I wasn't passionate about it, to be yeah. honest. Like I, like, I know what it takes. Be honest, yeah. you don't want to deal with anyone like me. Just, it's okay. Yeah, that too. Like that too. But no, you know what? 
I didn't I, and, and video, right? Like oh, I watched it, it like Countless Stars, cutting film. Um but I didn't because as a coach you have to you have to separate yourself from like from your team to an extent. Okay. Right? Like you can't necessarily be as invested in, say, a player, right? You have to look at like your staff, your team. Yeah. Um and for me, like I just I love the reason I love the player development side, I get a chance to like work just work with the players. Um, at the time. And that's what even in China, um, that's why I love being out there because like that's the job. Yeah. Right? There's no coaching involved. Um, it's just helping players on and off the court. Um, and it's more of like a mentorship role than anything else. How long did you spend in China? Uh, overall, was there two, two and a half years in total? What was that experience like? Uh, I mean, China's great. I mean, I was in Shanghai. Was, Shanghai. Shanghai is, I would say, probably one of the best cities in the world. Um, just like there, there are so many um, expats. Yeah. Um, from a technological standpoint, yeah. um, I would say that city is ahead of the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Um, and and the organization was great. Um, they did, they did like a really good job of taking care of not only myself but the other foreign um staff members and, and the players. So when you were there, how did you spend your time when you weren't working with players? Um, were you trying to build your resume back here? Were you, were you well, studying? Well, at the t well, no, at the time I was, um, yeah. So when I went out there initially, I was, I was finishing up my MBA. Okay. Uh, Online. No, I, all the work was done. Okay. I was just working on, uh, my, my MRP, my, okay. my research paper. Okay. Um, so I was conducting interviews while I was on that side. Um, and then I had to come back and uh, my partner and I had to present our work and okay. we ended up completing, completing the program. Um, and then when I was out there, uh, the second time I was, I was already working for the honey badgers. Mm -hmm. So I was still constructing the roster, um, and all that. So I would obviously do all my work throughout the day and then rest a bit. And then pretty much from like eight to like mm -hmm. 1 AM on that side. I was pretty much like reaching out to agents and players and stuff like that to build a roster. So you were doing three jobs at once, basically. Um, you were you were studying to finish your MBA. You were working as a player development coach, and you were and yeah, no, no, no. When I went back the second time, I was already done my MBA. Okay, so it's just pretty much like both two the, jobs. Two jobs. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you have a bit of like a you know work for yourself type spirit. You know, you 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 definitely have the a um, lot of naps. Yeah. Entrepreneurial spirit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you created a program out of that. You created, yeah, yeah. you know, what's it called fifty for free. Yeah. Why? Why was that important for you to do? Uh, I mean, just to, to give back, all right, to my community. What does the program do? It uh, provides um, kids from you know marginalized communities an opportunity to learn about financial literacy education, um, and I would say like imperative life skills through the game of basketball. So it's a combination of both passions, basketball and finance. Uh, it's free of charge uh, for kids from the community. And um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a way for me to give back um, to the people who, who help me. There are so many people, you know, I'd say like Miss Khan, Kim Eastern, Mr. Nicholson, God bless their souls. You know, my grandparents, like people that I can never repay, mm -hmm. um, but I could pay it forward. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, like just, just, to, just to help our community. And where is it now? Where are we now? Um, and when did you start it? So I sp started in 2018. Okay. And we expanded this summer to uh, Halifax. So how many programs in total do you have now? We have three. So we have a co-ed program. We started an all-girls program here in the city as well. And then we started a pro co-ed program in, uh, in Halifax. And what is, what is it? It's like 50 kids who come in and... Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the premise. So fifty kids free of charge, um, and then we bring in different educators. Okay. Based on what we've identified, like what we, what, 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 I guess where we feel um, the world is headed in terms of like different industries and stuff like that. But it's just honestly like our goal. We we don't want to turn them into financial experts. Like okay. that's not yeah, that's not the goal. But it's to plant as many seeds as possible. Okay. And to just help shift their mindset All right so regardless if you come from housing um single parent household you know whatever it is like you can attain wealth you know if you if you if you take the necessary steps at a young age and is there is this program in the summer or is it all year round 
Uh, so in Toronto, it's we're all, all year round because we work with different schools that fall under the um, Priority School Priority Schools umbrella initiative umbrella. Uh, so we work with five or six schools in the city, um, but our main program is is run through the summer months through July and August. Where do you want to take it? The goal goal of the program is to um, operate in inner city communities across the country, and then eventually across the globe. Okay. It, when speaking of building, you know, wealth at a young age, you, your your resume when you started, when you initially stopped, what did your resume look like? When I stopped playing, I stopped playing. Yeah, my resume. Yeah, <laughs> it was nothing. It was, <laughs> it was Jermaine Addison, former University FIBA, a list of like ten teams. And, and, like, and that's it. And work well with others. Work well with others. And um, uh, what did I say? Something about like partnerships. Because we used to, you know, obviously playing overseas. Yeah, yeah. You have different like sponsor events. Um, uh, I'd say like partnered and courted sponsors and all types of crap. Just trying to figure something out. That's a big problem for a lot of athletes. In fact, if you yeah. get funny enough, yesterday I had someone reach out to me and literally write me a message about that. About I'm, I'm now being done playing. And I have nothing on my resume, and that yeah. that was that happened to me. That happened to you. That's that's a that's a commonality. But I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's nothing, it, right? Like I, it's not nothing. Yeah. In the mind, it, it, in our mind, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, how did you combat that? Um, yeah, the, the stories when I met when I met with different people. Okay. Right. I think I think the the one thing as athletes that we need to do is highlight the fact that we're able to connect with different people. Mm. There are a lot of people, unfortunately, that don't know how to relate to others. What do you mean by that? Like, they don't know how to connect. They don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to speak. Uh, right? So the fact we're, like, as an athlete, you're forced to. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, you have to communicate on court. You have to go to these uh, sponsorship events. You have to do things, like, um, in the community. Yeah. Um, so we're all, And you have to give interviews. Right? So whether you have a good game or a bad game, right, there's a camera in your face. Right, the point. You know what I mean. So, we're forced to communicate when when we when we don't want to, mm-hmm. right? And to different people. And so, I think we need to highlight that. And then, and then, you know, everything that we've learned living in in, in different parts of the uh, the globe. Yeah, but I, I also think just like the disciplinarian part of like, yeah, and the discipline and and not you know like not being late. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Like I remember in Germany, practice start at ten. You'd be there at nine thirty. Yeah, you know, or yeah. even earlier, and you'd be working out. I remember when when Mathis was in there working. You're like, Yo, why aren't you in there working? Out? Well, you, gotta, yeah. you know, like <laughs> work. <laughs> you gotta get the extra work. Yeah, you gotta be there earlier. So all those things are all transferable because yeah. you've done that from a from a young age, right? And, yeah. You know, if you gotta show up somewhere, it is it is easier if you've been doing it already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, think about like in, in college, right? Like you go in a class. Yeah. Right, and practice, and then like. People in school, it's just like we're sometimes we get the short end of the stick, but we're practicing like four hours a day and we have to still get hand in assignments. You know what I mean? So our resumes are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but why why do you think athletes then struggle to receive the same sort of opportunity? Like my experience is not considered experience when I'm done playing and I now want to do something else. Like how, how do we fix that? Yeah, because I think people like, people don't necessarily understand right so uh, i would say there are organizations that do value like athletes right there are um i would say like rbc is one of them because mm-hmm. i know they had there's a partnership with the uh the coc and uh sport canada but that's just a lack of lack of understanding mm-hmm. so if, if you're a young athlete and you're now gonna stop doing that how do you how do you navigate that like what would be the first skill you would tell someone else to work on so that when they do get in front of someone else they are prepared. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is when you're overseas. Um, oh, I tell you, we're overseas NBA, we're, we're, wherever they're wherever they're playing, is just to meet different people. Because mm-hmm. um, sometimes, like, yeah, we just form a tribe, right? And we just yeah. and we just um, stick with uh, that. Stick, yeah, yeah. Stick, with, <laughs> stick, with, stick with other athletes. Yeah, yeah. Right, but just meet other people. And I go, going going back to like what I was saying, like I just identify identifying a passion, right, and working on that, um, and then just people. At the end of the day, it's all like you. 
anybody who's hiring, they're hiring because they feel they could trust that, that individual. Obviously, you, you have to be good at, at what you do, but to get in, can they trust you? Do you think um, when you're going into places, that's your, that's your number one priority is connecting with them and then establishing trust? Yeah, I mean, for me, like, I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I love people. So mm. if I go somewhere, which is like, I really go. That was going to say, where do, where, do, where, do, where do you go? But if I, if I do go, like, I make a conscious effort to speak to as many people as possible. Right. And I think that, like, stemmed from uh, at a young age, right? Like, and like, people could attest to this too, right? Like, when you're young, it's like, oh, okay, like, you go to the mall and, you know, you try to see who could get the most numbers, for example, right? <laughs> I mean, we, I mean, we used to do that, right? So we do that. We do. we do that, right? You go, okay, we're gonna go to the mall, we're gonna go to this event. Mm-hmm. Who get the most numbers? 100%. Right? I played so that game. Whether you get the, whether it's the right number or the wrong number. It wasn't successful very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> But like, I would say like that, forces that forces you to to, to talk to you yeah, even though you're inside oh, oh, you're, oh you're, your heart's fluttering oh my like, god i'm nervous right and and yeah just so for that so uh, for me like but started now, there uh, trust me at 33 now my game's tight <laughs> <laughs> no i'm good that was, yeah, was yeah. uh, regardless of the level whether you play nba college whatever you're gonna like i said you're gonna stop by by two two ways force or by choice Bro. Do you have any regrets? Uh, any regrets? Nah. Your career? No, no regrets. No regrets. Honestly, no regrets. You're not bitter at all. No. That's a big thing for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you know, you know, I don't even say no names, but we know there are people that are bitter still. And now I'm one of the happiest retired people you could find. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, back I felt I, I felt like I maximized um, my ability and, and talents and. I, I've met like even though I've never, never played an NBA game, like I met so many really um, interesting people playing overseas that I still talk to 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 this day. Mm-hmm. And um, like the fact, I, I, like I, and I always say this: I, if if I was down on my face and didn't have anything at all, I could grab my passport and travel to a number of countries, and I, and I'll be good. You have a place to stay. I have a place to stay. Uh-huh. I'll, I'll get a nice meal. Uh huh clothes whatever it is i need just from my time playing with or playing against and nothing priceless priceless can you cannot put a price priceless on but priceless. You, you know when you, it's natural like we we now like you played for canada for a long time when you played for canada it wasn't like how it is now when you see all these young canadians making hundreds of millions of dollars like you don't you don't feel any anything toward you know i mean towards that like i i so i'm so happy for, i'm so happy for those guys yeah um, and obviously, and, and a lot of them I have, I have a personal relationship with, so it's a little bit different or guys that like train, train with, you know, myself and some of the older guys when they were younger, but like anything else, like it, it's supposed to get better. Yeah. Right. And 10 years from now, it should be better than it is today. But, but, you know, we all know the guys that are. No, 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 no attitude. Yeah, they are. Right. And I think they have to like figure out a way to come to terms with themselves. It's right. hard to do though. It's yeah, it's hard. It's hard. And, and and look, the reality is, like as as a pro athlete, like it isn't fair sometimes. You, I mean, more times than that. And what I was gonna say, yeah. right? People people get screwed over. There's there's a lot. There's politics, politics. that are, that are yeah. involved. Politics, politics. Yeah. But you just have to you have to figure it out, you know. And and you know, you can't necessarily be bitter. Um, I, I mean, I, I would say that, but obviously, you know. It, it's for that person to 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 somebody to figure out, but I, I I understand why some people are mad. Mm-hmm. Um, but because you put your whole life into something, yeah, yeah. And when you're done and or you fall flat on your face, you're not as successful. There's no one there to pick you up. But that's why that's what well, that's why I said like identifying your passion, mm-hmm. another passion outside of the sport, mm-hmm. right? Because then you have something else that that you could hold on to. I think for me, like what made the transition somewhat easier is that I was able to stay busy. And 50 for free was like a, a blessing in disguise because my mindset was like, okay, like how can I build this thing out? Um, you know, obviously doing my MBA and then working for Canada Basketball, but I had something that I was laser focused on, mm-hmm. right? A couple other things as well too, but um, I, was able to, I was able to fill my time, which I think is important. I don't know, I 100% agree. Um, no. I can sort of attest to that myself um you you 
you spend this like a significant amount of time practicing playing basketball trying to master something that you love do you think if you didn't accomplish everything you would set out to you'd have the same perspective would you look at your career as a as a, you know as a, as a success if you didn't achieve everything that you set out to um to be honest probably as long as long as I gave it my honor and I did everything that I was able to. If if I gave everything that I was able to give, and if I fell short of whatever goals that I had, and I did fall short of, of the goals, right? Like you know, making the Olympics or playing in the NBA. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, regardless, like I, I still think that I would be in the same place mentally and emotionally. Do you feel accomplished? Yeah. I just, yeah, I do. I, when you when you look around at some of your peers, do they have the same sentiment? Uh, not all of them, no. Why? To be honest, maybe they didn't like. I don't know. That's a, that's a tough question. Like I would say, I think because I was able to, like I said, like the relationship the relationship piece. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I think that's enough, right? So regardless of what happened on the basketball court like the the bond the bonds that I, that I was able to form with other people right i think is I, like I, I wouldn't trade that for anything you know what i mean like I, and i think that's and that but, but my perspective is a little bit different mm -hmm. right so okay like yeah maybe we, we maybe we didn't win a championship that season but like i can go to belgrade and have a nice dinner with somebody you know, you know what i mean like so I don't know. That's for me. It's a little bit different. No one really remembers any of the games or anything. It is it nobody is the, cares anyway. Yeah, it's the people in the relationship. Nobody cares. There's always a new champion. You could win it in 2010, 2011, or someone new. No, no it, nobody cares. Yeah, a white championship with Montenegro, like nobody cares. No. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nobody cares. So you 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 accomplished so many different things on and off the court. What do you want to do next? What are your professional goals? One of my professional goals, professional goals. Um, well, I'm extremely passionate about financial literacy education. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that, um, without saying too much, um, that no, say, go ahead, uh, say, say, say all. Then he's been saying. No, I, I just, I just want to make sure that like financial literacy is something that is taught um, within our education ed education system. Okay, for sure. Um, that's one thing. So we're figuring out ways to um digitize what it is that we're doing yeah um so that's that's i'd say that's one thing you kind of see where you're going with that yeah yeah yeah. yeah. trying to trying to figure that out obviously expand the program to to service other inner city communities like i said across the country and eventually uh across the globe what about you personally personally um like yeah. in 20 years you want to look back at this domain now and what do you well, say? yeah, well, 20 years, yeah, I, I mean, I want to have a family, um, you know what I mean, and be able to raise, I guess, proper children, like, <laughs> not 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 kids like myself, be, be kids much better than that, you better, better than that one. You better specify proper these <laughs> days before this yeah, goes yeah, live, yeah, 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 Better, better than I was. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I just, uh, and then obviously like just, you know, all the other kids that we have in our program, mm -hmm. um, we want to be able to see them succeed and own homes and build wealth for themselves and their families. You know, I'd say, you know, I'd, I'd be happy, I'd be happy with that. Pretty good accomplishment, I'd like to say. Before we play our final game, I want to take um, a few minutes. It's probably the most I'm going to speak, but um, I remember when in 2018 was my last year trying out for Canada and um, I got invited to come. Jay Triano invited me. You were there. And I felt I went to that camp thinking, well, there's just Brady Heslip. And then talent wise, I was probably just underneath him. You know, mm -hmm. um, I was, you know, I was going back to Spain uh, the same year and I got cut, even though I packed my bag ready to go. Yeah. And um, when Rana cut me, he basically said, yeah, we you know we're going to keep Jermaine. And I was pissed. I never told you this. I was pissed. Mm. And I was mad at you for a while. So this is uh, Argentina? Argentina. Ar Argentina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we got crushed the first game against whoever we played. Yeah. But like, Argentina. Grant Plays was there and oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Marty. And I'm like, this is, this is insane. Like, yeah, I get yeah. cut, you're there. And I was mad and I was mad at you. And I remember saying to myself, um, after a while, after that all kind of ended, um, I had to realize 
why, why would he keep you? You know, no, no disrespect. At the time, I was better than you. I won't lie. When I was 23, hey, you were way better than me. But at that time, I was better than you. A year older. So I was like, what's going on here? Like, how am I getting cut? But then I started to think. I started to think about why the talent wouldn't matter and why he'd keep you. And why, even though I only played six years, I still consider myself a professional because of who I got to watch. Yeah. The person I got to watch and, I, and that I was closest to the most was you. Yeah. Because when I got to Germany, I learned everything from you. I learned to show up really early. I learned to so, put in work. I learned to stay late. I learned to care about my diet. I learned to understand what how to watch a film. Before before I before that I didn't really pay attention to film. Like yeah, I yeah. paid attention, but I, I wanted to go out there and hoop. Yeah, yeah. But all the things that I had learned are why I can say to myself I'm a pro because I got to watch one. That's what and without that experience, without having you there to 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 do all that, I don't think I would say that. So after a while, it kind of became easy for me to see why you'd be on the team, regardless of your age, because what you have the things you've done for this country, things you've done for people like me without me even telling you, are, are priceless. There is no there's no there's no price I could put on that. Yeah. I only got to play six years, but all five of those years after, through injury, through it all, I was able to have that sense of of what it takes to be a professional and I could call myself that. And like I said, I had, in my opinion, one of the best examples. Uh, so, so. Um, I appreciate that. I wanted to say thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And um, yeah. Well, we'll play our final game. We call it right. for three, and uh, you can answer any of the questions with a sentence or a statement. Got it. Um, one of so the questions could be a sentence or a statement. <laughs> so first question is: Basketball is. Basketball is. I would say basketball is a way of life and an opportunity to make it out of your environment. Okay. I think I messed up. I should I should have said one word or one one sentence. <laughs> okay. I'm so sad. <laughs> one word or one sentence. My bad. My own game when I messed with that. Yeah, All right. When people hear the name Jermaine Anderson, what should they think of? Jermaine Anderson. Um a lover of people. If you could sum up in your career, um one word to describe it, what would it be? A, a ride. In that two words? Ride. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, okay, no, I'll say blessing, blessing, blessing. <laughs> We're good with that. <laughs> blessing is a blessed end. All right. Love. <laughs> hey, if you like this podcast, it would mean the most to me and our team if you could like, comment, and subscribe to our channel.